Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, and welcome. We have another Thursday with the wonderful Gabriella Hernandez. Hello, hello. Gabriella. Hello. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if you like, we always think it's very fun to see where uh, everybody's watching from. So if you don't mind putting where you are watching from in the comments, that would be very great. Uh, I'm Amber, I will be answering questions you have. So if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I might type back, but most likely I will ask them out loud for Gabriella, hooray. So today uh, we have another special day. We just launched our Lucy collection last week, and that was such a big day, Gabrielle. <laughs> it just went over so great. Um, it was really exciting. So uh, that just happened last week. We still have lots of the collection left. So first, we want to um, we want to make sure we have to see if you guys have any questions about Lucy. So if you have questions about the collection, about Gabriella working with Lucy Arnaz or anything like that. Uh, that's all up for grabs or any stories behind the collection you'd like to know. Um, that would be totally great to hear. So uh, we'll be going into that in just a second. And we already have a couple questions. Uh, and lastly, Gabrielle has a couple of fun vintage makeup pieces to show off as well. So you get a two for one, a Q and A and vintage makeup. So it's a lot of fun. Okay, so. Do, do, do. I'm just going back here. Okay, so wonderful. Uh, how many glam women will you be featuring in your line? Uh, ask the makeup or breakup blog. So yeah, do you, we can't give away any names for our iconic women collection, but what are some of your other, any ideas or inspirations behind it, Gabriella? Well, I think it, it's, it's going to be an ongoing series so it doesn't really have a number associated with it. It's basically uh, we're picking out women that we think are and that uh, you will identify with and also that contribute. Think uh, in advance. So, so we're going to keep going and, and uh, you know, talk about as many women uh, as possible. Uh, especially to expose younger people to these women, because a lot of the times, um, you know, they might have uh, heard of uh, like the show, for example, like I Love Lucy, but they've never uh, actually seen the actress. They weren't, you know, sure. They didn't know that she actually had the studio. So, so we want to get this information out to to uh, all of the younger folks out there. So we're going. Um, we're just going to keep going with with this. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a couple of collections a year, so a couple of iconic women uh, every year that we will feature. And in, uh, I don't think we're gonna ever run out of women because there's so many iconic, legendary women out there that we're just gonna have to keep going uh, and going uh, to to get all of them in. <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice kind of problem to have, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> nice, they'll never run out of iconic women. No, I don't think so. There's too many of them <laughs> out there, too many women that are iconic. Yeah. Um, Dear Cupcake asked about shipping for the collection. So if anybody's watching that is waiting for their shipment, it's all coming. We had, it was our biggest, the biggest launch ever, yes. right? <laughs> yes, it was. And in in the, in our fulfillment center is catching up. They, they have all the product. The product is there. It's just shipping out in waves, you know, as, as many as they, uh, they can uh, process uh, every, every day. But, uh, but they, they are doing their best. Uh, remember that uh, a lot of the times the staffing is, is lower in these, uh, in these places because of COVID still. So, mm -hmm. so uh, just bear with us because uh, we're all kind of working with, uh, within the new guidelines. Uh, so, um, so the, uh, the amount of people on the line at one time is reduced from what it was before. So it might take a couple of extra days. So uh, just give us a little leeway on the shipping, but everything is on its way. It's all there and they're processing things as quickly as possible. Yeah. So thank you all for your patience with all of this. We completely understand uh, being antsy about it, but it's just was such a huge success and uh, just taking a little longer than usual. But thank you again for waiting and uh, it'll all be there very soon. Uh, so let's see. Um, okay. So now we've got a couple more questions. Yay. 
And another question, um, how did you, how did your meeting with Lucy Arnaz originally come about? How'd you first meet her? I actually made, met her at a licensing expo. You know, there's, there's shows that they do every year um, that are basically about different types of licensing and all the, the studios are there and all the different movies that are going to launch and, and characters that people, you know, would license, you know, that animated characters or other types of uh, characters. So, um, so she was actually there that day uh, with CBS because they have a partnership with CBS. Uh, CBS owns, you know, the, the I Love Lucy show, and then mm -hmm. uh, the Arnaz family still owns the likeness of, of uh, both Lucy and, and Desi. Uh, uh, so, uh, so basically they're in partnership uh, with CBS. So um, she was at the CBS booth and, and we had a, a long chat there and, uh, and had a, a great meeting. Uh, we hit it off uh, really well. She's, she's a lovely woman. Uh, really, really great to work with. Um, very powerful lady, just like her mom. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the nut doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, she's actually producing the film right now. There's a, a, a biopic on, on uh, Lucille Ball uh, that they're... Uh, I just uh, read, actually, that they got... Um, uh, tax credit to actually, oh. uh, yeah, go forward with the filming, and I think it's done with Amazon. This project, uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 looking really really great. Um, so she's working on that. I think she's producing this. Um, she's also a performer herself. She has her own one woman show that she travels the country with. Uh, she's involved with the museums, you know, with the comedy museum mm -hmm. and also the, the Lucy uh, Ball uh, Museum as well. So she's, she's very, very busy. She's all over the place. Um, but, but very, very great uh, lady to, uh, to work with. Uh, we both had the same idea because, it, you know, the uh, Lucy Ball <coughs> and the license and then the products that have been produced before we're really more on the kind of collectible kitschy type of product, you know, that had mm -hmm. to do with funny things in the show and, and that kind of thing, like, you know, refrigerator magnets and this kind of yeah. merchandise. So obviously she wanted to get away from that, especially when it came to, um, to the category of beauty. So um, I have the same idea because I obviously didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to, <laughs> really do glamour Lucy because she was a very, very glamorous woman. Um, so we both kind of had the same thought uh, process of what what we, we thought would be appropriate. And so we worked together rather well in actually, uh, they gave me a lot of latitude on, on actually designing it and, and making it uh, a really a reflection of very glamorous Lucy. Yeah. And we have kind of a follow-up question from Kristen. Uh, what's your favorite piece of the collection? Uh, my favorite piece? It's probably uh, hard to pick one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I like the, the, um, the pencil and the sharpener. I, I, mm -hmm. I think it's cute. Uh, but I also love the lipstick uh, container uh, because I, I think it's just, uh, I, I like her image on it and it kind of captures, uh, you know, the, the essence of that, um, but but I, I, I like I like all the pieces really. Uh, they're they're all really uh, they they all kind of capture some part of her personality and yeah. what she liked and uh, what she wore, you know. Um, but uh, but the lipsticks are definitely iconic because she's kind of more known for wearing that that uh, that bright shade. So the color was uh, really important to get that color correct. Yeah. And you uh, commissioned the, the artwork that you used for the compact and the, yes. and the lipstick. And what was kind of your idea behind it? You know, how did you want it to look different from the other Lucy things? Well, I wanted it to look like a kind of like a, a fashion icon type uh, picture of her instead of being, um, again, comedic or yeah. an expression. I wanted her to look uh, really regal and more like a fashion illustration uh, so that it would give that um, that kind of glamour girl, you know, a model 
uh, type of yeah. type of look because that's what I saw that I wanted to convey. Um, and uh, for each of these collections, we'll be commissioning artists to do uh, different portraits of our ladies, so that we have uh, 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 we give you know kind of a platform to all these emerging artists, and mm. then we have very very uh, unique and uh, interesting art for each of them, and we can capture yeah. kind of their essence with the artworks that we do um, for for each of the of the women that we will feature in the future. Uh, so this one was done by uh, an Irish uh, artist, and um, uh, he uh, he worked on it and you know followed what I had conveyed to him. But he's a fashion illustrator, so it's, it oh. is very fashion. And yeah. that's kind of what I wanted, so that's why I thought he was perfect to capture that. That's awesome. And then, yeah, I had, I had just one more personal question. Uh, I was curious of how you chose the colors for the uh, the Love That Redhead lipstick. I mean, we know that's Lucy's color, but then how did you choose the color to match it with the lip pencil? Because I was kind of surprised, like, how much it transforms, you know, the lipstick when I tried it on. Uh, and I was just wondering the thought behind those colors. Well, it, you know, remember that the shows were filmed in black and white, so you needed a lot of contrast in, in black and white because if not, everything kind of looks gray. So um, by having a pencil that's slightly darker, you can really build up the, 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 the volume and the shape of the lip so that it shows really well on camera, uh, mm -hmm. especially in black and white. Um, so uh, that's the reason that the pencil is, is darker because it's supposed to enhance that color, that, you know, really deep red color yeah. and, and deepen it so that you can see the actual shape of the lip really well. Um, oh. And if you layer it on top of it, you get even stronger red or darker, deeper red. So you yeah. can kind of get a variety of two types of red, whether you use the liner or you don't. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm very easily <laughs> amused, I guess, but I was just so uh, impressed by how the color looked different with liner and without. And oh, yeah. Hopefully yeah. that's interesting to other people. Yeah. Uh, cool. We had a couple other little collectors. Also, Sarah, yes, our connection is better today. Thanks, all of you Yay. who watch these. <laughs> we are trying our best. It's, uh, you know, it's a, a fun adventure every time. But yes, yeah. I'm glad it's working out. Um, we had a couple quick questions about products. Um, so I was asking about Poppy Cream Rouge. That's going to be back very soon. Yes. That'll yes. be yes. back, no problem, in, yeah, not very long at all. Um, we also had, I'm just trying to get the name. We also had a question about, um, would you ever have uh, a Black Pinups ass? Will there ever be a permanent line of eyeshadows and lip liners for Besame? Is that something you would consider? Yes, actually, I do have it in, in the docket. So it is coming mm -hmm. up. It's just, it's, you know, there's so many other other launches in between. But yes, it is. It, there are products that are actually scheduled to be in the line um, as a permanent uh, feature of the line. Yes. And with any questions about future stuff, uh, it would be so fun to just give all of it away all the time. <laughs> but unfortunately, we can't. But yes, that is something that will be coming up. And uh, we'll see timelines kind of change every day <laughs> with the current stuff going on. So it's hard to give dates, but that will be something that's coming out. We had a question about foundation sticks. Those aren't coming back right now, our foundation. Not, not right now, no. They're not in the, in the lineup right now uh, because there's just so many things that got delayed, especially collections that were already scheduled that got delayed several months. So we kind of have to get all those collections in. Um, so uh, a lot of our core products got a bit delayed because of, of all these collections that, that uh, have to launch and we kind of lost a few months in between there. Um, so uh, we're trying to catch up. So as soon as we get uh, closer to any new products, you guys will be the first to know. Yay. Um, Pink002357 <laughs> had a question about how can you share the process behind how you chose the eyeshadow colors for the uh, Lucy palette? Sure. Um, some of the colors were colors that she actually liked, like the lilac was uh, one of her favorite shades. And yeah. they did use that kind of color in the show as a shadow, as a single shadow. So she oh. just used it. Yeah, she just uh, uh, 
there wasn't a lot of shadowing in the in the eye, but because the lashes were so big and you know the lash took a lot of the of the you know kind of spotlight on there. Yeah. So uh, if there was any shadow, it was really a little bit of the taupe color um, or or the brown to kind of like do a bit of the crease but but it wasn't a lot of shading uh that was done in the eye area for for that particular show um but if they did want to add something they used the lilac over the whole and if you look at older photos of lucy um from the 40s uh and the in the 50s uh you'll see that some of them she's wearing only lilac shadow mm -hmm. over the whole eyelid uh, so it was something that she liked, and lilac was her favorite shade, uh, mm -hmm. so that's why it's in there as well. Um, the blush, uh, the the uh, color that looks like blush is actually, you can use as a blush. That that was yeah. the color of blush uh, for, especially for the uh, 60s Lucy look. So use that color for the blush color as well as, you know, if you want a peachy color of shadow on there. Um, the, uh, the other shades are shades that... Uh, that she's been shown photographed with as far as uh, matching outfits. So if she, uh -huh. she would wear blues, she would, you know, have some blue in the shadow. The uh, frosty blue shades are uh, definitely ones that she wore in the 60s uh, when she had her other show on yeah. TV, uh, the Lucy show. So, so you can see pictures of her wearing exactly that look if you look for yeah. Uh, Lucy in the 60s, she has that um, kind of frosty uh, blue shadow. Uh, she has some shots that are all blue shadow. Yeah. So, uh, so some of those shades are seen in different different periods uh, of her makeup, uh, where she used the lighter shades uh, of the lip, um, and uh, also when she used the red uh, on the lip as well, she would use the blue, the darker blue shadows. Oh. So, uh, so yeah, if you look up different pictures of her, you'll see all of the colors that are on that palette reflected on, on, those, on those pictures. That's great. And we have, uh, if you want to check out our blog, if you like Lucy, we have all kinds of Lucy information, uh, information about her and her life, and also how to get those looks inspired by her 50s and 60s looks. Um, and also the interview you did with Lucy Arnaz and uh, Kate Luck and Mel Connor, Lucy's, Lucille Ball's granddaughter. So uh, that's a really fun one too, if you like. Uh, there's a lot of really fun information in that podcast that was very cool uh, <laughs> to get to listen to, I thought. Uh, let's see, oh yes, what lipsticks are we wearing today? Yes, I, we're both wearing the, Lucy. love that redhead. Yes. Yeah, the Lucy yes. one. So yeah, we're both wearing that. Uh, my lighting is very like warm and a little odd today, but uh, you can still Mine see it's cool. still bright. And it so, is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> So you get to yeah, see how that affects like it. Fl fluorescent bulbs here or fluorescent type bulbs. So yes, it, it's a very cool light. So you can see how it looks different depending on the lighting, actually. But it's still, it's a very vibrant, fun color. I mean, it really, it, it, it looks a little bit brighter on the lips, but in a way that gives, I mean, I've worn it a few times and it's like, I'm always so surprised because <laughs> it's yes. just like such a lovely lifting kind of shade uh, to me. Um, Let's see. We had a question. Oh, the Bessame Cosmetics Store in Burbank. It is open, and it's open yes. to go inside. They, yes. You can yes. only have about three people in at a time, and we're being very careful about distancing and all of that. But you can, uh, you can actually go in. Yes, yes, you can, and it's open uh, daily mm -hmm. from eleven to five. Yep, from eleven a.m. Yeah. to five so, p.m. Uh, so yes, stop by if you want to see the things in person. Uh, they have the Lucy collection there. They also have other items that we've had in the past. If um, Any um, items that we have very short stock of that uh, are no longer on the website because there's only a few items left uh, are usually in the store. So if you're looking for a product that might have sold out in the past, they might have it there. Yeah. Because, and you can um, always call if you're not sure, yes. especially if it's a sold out online item. You can always call the store and ask and they'll let you know just so you don't come in, you know, if you're yes. coming from farther away or anything like that. Um, yes, the museum is there, though. If you're yeah, coming in, you true. can definitely see all of uh, my collection of antiques. I have two cases there. Uh, they're all my uh, antique collections. So, uh, you know, when you come in, uh, feel free to 
to uh, look through all of, of the things in the cases there. Yeah. And uh, at the store, they don't have testers exactly, but you can test the colors because they uh, yeah. just swipe a clean uh, applicator and hand that to you. And they have gloves and only clean applicators are ever used on the testers that are behind the counters next to one person. So you can actually still try your colors. Uh, you just have to talk to the people behind the counter and they're always happy to help. Yeah. Um, so, so it is nice. It is one of the few places you can actually try things out makeup wise, uh, and it's yeah. in a very safe way. <laughs> yes, yeah, we always have this type yeah. of thing in the store anyway, so it's not a lot different for us than it was before because um, our store was always a full service uh, store, so so the girls would help you and, and give you disposable applicators for every color that you wanted to try in the past. So we've always been very, very careful about contamination, but now more so than before um you know everything is uh, sanitized uh uh every every hour we have sanitizing machines we have um new uh, stone countertops that get sanitized all the time and glass surfaces so um so it, it we're trying to keep things very very safe uh for you but also still uh let you experience things if you want to with uh disposable applicators yeah we have, uh, this is a fun question, also from the Makeup or Breakup blog. Uh, what do you recommend for someone wanting to start a beauty business during this time? Like, wow. Quite a loaded question. <laughs> that, that's, that's hard. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, whatever you want to start, I think you should really know who your target audience is, know a lot about them, and then have something that you think is compelling to them. There are so many products out there right now that I think you need something very unique and interesting to catch people's eye uh, and, uh, and then have really good marketing behind it so that you can tell people exactly what is different and exciting about your product. Um, and also, you know, determine from the get-go uh, how much, uh, you know, of an investment this is going to be and, and have that, you know, that money set aside so that you know that you have the budget to actually carry out your idea and get it to market. Um, because things do cost a lot more than you think they do sometimes. And a lot of times you end up spending way more money than you thought you, you would. So, um, so budgeting things and actually knowing um, what you need to get started is really, really important. Um, you know, and, and then what you want to do with your business too is really important to know. It's like, what kind of business do you want it to be? Um, do you want to like go in and then and then go out? Is it a you know short term business? Is it something you want to have long term? Uh, do you have a partner? Are you doing it by yourself? How many hours are you going to dedicate to this? All these things you should ask yourself because these are the things that will come up first. And if you don't have good answers or if you haven't figured those things out, they will be the things that will get kind of get in your way. That's great advice. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, and yeah, things also, it seems like things might take a little more time right now than yes. they would yes. at, at another point. So yes. I'm sure patience is a piece of things. Yeah, well, they as do. well. Everybody, everybody definitely is working on a limited, um, uh, you know, scope right now. So manufacturing is a, a bit slower maybe than it was if you're doing something completely new and you're trying to figure um, something out as far as formulations and that it might take longer to do these things because again resources uh, resources are, are tight at, at laboratories in different places so um, yeah definitely it's going it, it might take a little bit longer to, to do things um, but you know again if you have a good idea there's always opportunities that's you know that's the great thing about uh, about this country that you know if you if you have a better mousetrap as they say you know there's <laughs> yeah. always somebody uh who will uh you know beat the path to your door like this <laughs> so uh so i think uh, it's it's really it's really uh you know what you have to offer and how you present it and uh and then really how much work you're going to put behind it too Cool. Uh, we had a couple of requests to open up a store in Las Vegas after COVID is over. Oh, okay. So yeah. You have at least two people that are very, very excited uh, wow. to go. Wow, where in Las Vegas? I mean, there's so many places over there. I have no idea where even I would put a store because 
I mean, there's so many casinos, but then there's the downtown and it's kind yeah. of different vibes in those places. So Yeah, well, they mentioned the Betty Page store and that people love red lipstick in Vegas. Oh, yes, so. yes. Is that, is that <laughs> still good... there, the Betty Page store? I, I, I don't know. I wasn't sure if it was still there. I guess so. I'll see. Yeah, I'll see if they write something back. But wow. yeah, <laughs> just we had a few people. Oh, yeah. Someone also wants a store in Texas. So we'll just oh, open okay. stores everywhere. Oh, okay. great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just open Betty it Page everywhere. Is, I, I remember that store. I, I have been there. Uh, I just wasn't sure if it was still there uh, because I know they went through um, uh, uh, several changes in, in sure. uh, the ownership of that company. So I wasn't yeah. quite sure if they kept the store. Yeah, but, they might uh, have. yeah if it's still there, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. People loved your advice. Also, someone said that they, you should do a collection just about you, just the Gabrielle Hernandez <laughs> iconic woman. <laughs> Collections. There are some very. Uh, An uh, Anna Fantasia says, "I was fortunate uh, to meet Gabrielle last year and was just starstruck. She's so beautiful, and I was just tongue-tied. I would love, and she also would love to see an Audrey Hepburn collection. But anyway, she oh, so was starstruck yeah. struck by you. I thought that was very, very sweet. So would I. And so would I. I. I mean, we have we have a lot of goodies for you, though. You won't be disappointed for sure. Oh, of course." <laughs> The Gabriella Red, someone says. Yeah, oh. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? We yes. never know. Oh, um, that's amazing. If you guys have any other questions, let us know. Um, Sarah also said she's taking notes on your business advice because she said it was just good business advice, period. So <laughs> that's if you, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I could talk about business for a while. I, you know, <laughs> I've been at it for, you know, 17 years already. So it, it's uh, I've learned a lot from a lot of mistakes. So, you know. <laughs> I can at least tell you all the mistakes I've made so you don't make the same ones. <laughs> and um, if you guys are interested, write in the comments uh, if you would like to have an episode like this that is just business kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, we, I think we'd be happy to do that. So yeah, let us know if that would be interesting and oh, we'll do that. Yes, there's um, so much, there's so much. I mean, you, you really need uh, a while to cover everything that has to do with business because there's just so many pitfalls and so many things people don't tell you. Uh, about uh, anything and yeah. you kind of find out the hard way and and that's a that's really a harsh uh, way to find out so yeah. uh, it would have been great if uh, people had put out more information uh, out on on some of these things but you know when I started there just wasn't any anything like that yeah you know uh, available so but now it's just uh, there's so much information everywhere that it's it's a great time yeah Let's see, we had a couple of quick questions. Um, a couple quick questions. We had oh, about the Snow White collection, if we're gonna bring that back. We're not gonna bring back the whole of any collection, limited collection, because it's very hard. It's very hard, yes. Um, and then, oh, is Bessemé uh, going to be involved in the New York Makeup Museum once it's able to launch? Well, yes, I am already uh -huh. involved in the Makeup Museum, actually. I, I'm one of the advisors for the Makeup Museum. So I've been involved since the uh, beginning of that idea. Uh, and yes, we do have our products in the, in the makeup museum. We have them in the shop as well. Uh, so once it opens, I, I was supposed to go to the opening. I know, you had your tickets to booked, yeah. I think. <laughs> Unfortunately, that all fell apart so quickly. Uh, but yes, I already had my ticket and I was uh, going to go there for the opening. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have an opening date uh, yeah. yet, um, but yes, I am. I am very much involved with the makeup museum and all the exhibits and uh, putting things in it uh, of my own collection or, or um, advising on, on design or, or layout or any other things that uh, are going on with the museum. But uh, it's it's been a very exciting exciting project. I can't wait mm -hmm. for it to open actually. <laughs> And we had one, uh, also it seems like people, uh, we have had a few comments of people being interested in those like business chats. So okay. stay tuned, we'll, we will let you know and, uh, and that will probably be in the near future. Uh, and for the perfumes, some questions about perfumes, they will be back. Yeah, uh, it's just gonna be a while. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to squeeze them in as much as I can, but I, like I said, we have so many other commitments of collections that we're supposed to launch. Uh, you know, sooner than later that we kind of have to squeeze all these other collections uh, in. 
Um, so I had to kind of postpone some of our core products in order to fit all the, the products that got delayed. So uh, they will be coming back. I redesigned the bottle. I redesigned everything. And um, uh, so all of your favorites are coming back. And I even put in two new fragrances for you in the new collection. Ooh. So uh, so as soon as uh, uh, we can get back to our core line products, uh, they will be back. They will be back to me. Cool. So uh, if you have other questions, let us know. And then in the meantime, let's show up one of the vintage sure. pieces. And sure. uh, we'll, uh, you know, keep Gabrielle so many things while we speak coming back to these. And I know we promised a books episode a while ago, but just things yes. uh, had to get delayed and stuff. And we will do one of those again soon. Yes. Oh, <laughs> but yes. Let's see what you have today. So I have a few items that are from, you know, turn of the century, 1920s era uh, today to show you. Uh, the first one here is, uh, is what they call a figural puff. It's, it's a puff that has a, a, a little lady in the top there. Ah. You see her. You see her there? That's so cute, yeah. Um, so uh, she's, she's, uh, she's made out of porcelain. You can see her hairstyle is very much 20s mm -hmm. on there. And then on the back, she's she's a puff. Um, it's just like uh, a regular powder. powder yeah, puff. regular powder puff. Uh, oh, so these so kinds cute. of uh, uh, pieces like this, uh, what they call figural puffs, were really popular uh, turn of the century. They had uh, ones that looked like, uh, you know, Marie Antoinette and, you know, like, uh, you know, different styles of ladies and then and then they started um they made them in the 30s as well 20s and 30s so there's a lot of them coming from europe uh that had a lot of flappers and uh -huh. other other 1920s fashions in in these and uh some of them stand up and have like little legs on them they're so <laughs> cute uh but yeah it's a really cute she's uh she's like a little little figurine you can see she has uh even a back to her yeah. hair style with a band um sarah asked is there a, a name for the little puff lady no there, there <laughs> isn't uh there, there really is isn't a name for her but she has a, a little skirt and then mm -hmm. uh and then she's sewn in to the, yeah right there's good uh, yeah she has oh, okay yeah sewn in she's oh, sewn wow. in to the to the uh, puff um, that's cute but she's very delicate uh as far as like the little porcelain figurine on top she's like really really delicate and uh it has a lot of detail so if you look really yeah. close you can see she's got like blush and, and, and everything on on there little feather that's and cute. She's yeah very, little very feather cute. In her. very very cute so th these were um yeah, these were very, very popular, and uh, it, it, they're um, harder to find now, and they're um, more expensive yeah. if you actually find one that has the, the base. There are some that actually come with a little base that has legs, so it looks like she has a skirt and then the little legs on the bottom, but the puff is actually kind of like the, the skirt, the uh -huh. bottom of the skirt, and it sits on a little plate like this, and then the <laughs> legs are underneath. <laughs> Uh, and they're very, very cute. But anyway, I wanted to show you this one because it's, 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 it's a really cute one. I that thought, is so cute. Um, and that's from the 20s, you said, obviously. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, um, my gosh. The other thing I want to show you, this is, uh, this is a, what they call a nail polish um, from that period. And um, it's a, yeah. it's like a little box like this. Um, and what it is inside is it's kind of a, a white stone on the interior. And yeah. what you would do is rub this on your nails so that it would kind of, uh, you know, buff them. It's like literally polishing it. Yeah, yeah. literally <laughs> polishing them. Uh, oh. So and this is what they did to their nails. They would polish them with this and then sometimes tint them with a little bit of red. Uh, coloring uh, or something. This is before people use nail polish mm -hmm. on their nails. They would actually buff them with this and, and then uh, and then try to use a natural colorant to make them slightly pink. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, they would use this and it's kind of like a like a little like very 
fine pumice. Oh, okay. Um, type, type stone. So it's a it's a little piece of stone, basically. I mean, that's what it wow. is. Wow. Like a piece of stone in here, in a in a little cardboard <laughs> box, um, and that that's what they use to um, to to do their nails. So, so very wow. interesting. Uh, it costs uh, twenty five cents at the time. So oh, I there. wonder how much. That... And that's also again from the from the early twenties. Yeah. Probably? Yeah. Oh wow! Very interesting uh, little little thing. So the early manicuring uh, techniques. This was very popular uh, before polish came came around and, and, and actually could color the nail with a, a flat color. Because before there was flat color, there was clear color, uh, and, mm -hmm. and and uh, clear color was uh, more um, readily available. Uh, but uh, color that was completely matte, like the colors that we have now, where you uh -huh. see the whole nail is red or green or blue. Yeah, it's opaque. Uh, mm -hmm. That took a little bit longer to, to figure out. Uh, oh. so, so the first polishes were really just clear coats, basically, uh, that mm -hmm. went over the nail. And, and people then, still buff them, you know, yeah. and, and then put like a clear coat over, over the top. And, um, and that's how they would do their nails. And BP asked, uh, would they use, they'd use the stone by themselves, would they also use it with a buffing cream ever? Yes, they, 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 they were creams uh, and they were uh, buffing uh, tools, you know, like a little chamois uh, oh, thing uh -huh. with, with, a, with a handle. And then you would, you would use that to kind of go back and forth and buff the nail. Uh -huh. uh, and, that, and that's how you would get a really nice kind of soft, even nail bed, Look, yeah. you know, because you would just buff it until you got rid of all the ridges and, and you know, and all the discoloration and that, and then you would either put some kind of a, uh, a cream on it, or you could put a, a clear on it, or hmm. just leave it that way, but that's kind of how they did their nails. Um, we had one other question. Oh, there it is. Um, Anna asked, um, what's the oldest piece in your collection? The oldest piece in my collection? If you can, or like, what's one of the older things? Uh, one of the oldest things I have is, um, is a blush from um, the uh, 1900. Uh, I have a, a, a blush that came in a bottle and... Uh -huh. uh, and it's a, it's kind of like a liquid rouge, and it has a little cork mm -hmm. on the top, and it was sold like that, and then you would just kind of put it a little bit on your on your cheeks as a as a rouge, and yeah. that's one of the oldest ones that I have. And I have others, but that that one I remember that uh, that was quite old that that piece, yeah. and it still has some in it, which is kind of ridiculous. That wow. You know, that's something that's that old was still something over a hundred years old and yeah. still has, has stuff in in the box wow <laughs> <laughs> that's so neat that's so cool um did you have anything else you'd like to share or yeah i have um i have this uh double blush uh compact here which is oh. really cool it's made out of brass it's really heavy brass um and when you open it it actually has two shades oh, yeah. of blush in there. So it looks like two shades of blush, but it actually isn't. One of them is supposed to be your powder. Oh, really? See, you can see how pink the powders were in this period of time. Wow. That the face was supposed to actually look that pink right there. So I know everybody what, looked yeah. like me, I guess, back then. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, they, well, the, 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 you know, is, the complexion, the, 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 the preferred color was a pinkish kind yeah. of kind of white. So, so that was a face powder on one side, and then the other one was your blush. Wow. And when is this one from? At the same period of time, around 1920s. Oh, so okay. Stuff. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, and it's by a company called uh, uh, Luxor. Uh, and uh, this company was really interesting because uh, at the be beginning of the company, uh, they they were um, this company was was originally a uh, you know a, a meat processing plant. Oh, <laughs> and uh, and they they uh, since uh, that's how 
cosmetic companies kind of started in like New Jersey, New York area, they uh, they would use byproducts from uh, meat plants to make different cosmetics, like you know the the grease and the and the gelatin and all these mm -hmm. things that they would get from from uh, you know parts of of, of animals. Right. So it was. Uh, very common to have like a, a butcher plant and then have a cosmetic factory uh, close to it and somehow <laughs> that they're related you know so yeah. this a, a company that processed meats and then they started this um, uh, Luxor brand of cosmetics um, and obviously they didn't want to say that they were <laughs> you know a, a, <laughs> a meat plant uh, but they said for some reason they thought that uh, it was uh, you know clever that they alluded to the fact that they were a meat plant on it mm -hmm. so they later changed this but this is their first logo and in their logo if you look at the uh, swash under the l uh-huh i'll put it right yeah. here so you can see it yeah if you look at that swash under the l uh-huh do you see that is it like a big you see the knife? Swash <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a scimitar. Oh, which is a knife. <laughs> yeah, those long curved so knife. Right? Knife. It's like a big old chopping knife that you use to chop up uh, people and things. Uh, so, so they thought oh, it was clever boy. to put the knife there uh, as a as a you know kind of kind of alluding to the fact that they yeah. are. I, I, I meat processing um, oh my plant. Gosh. But, uh, later on, it, it, it was taken out and the swash was changed. But it was kind of <laughs> funny to me that they had to kind of uh, covertly uh, put something in there that had to do with their um, their parent company. Wow. So, uh, so this this one is kind of funny because of, <laughs> I, I think the history of it is rather funny. Um, uh, but the color is pretty interesting because I mean you know the, the obviously the powder the the white color is is uh, is way too pink but uh, but the blush color is probably as, as oh, well yeah. so it's interesting that you know this type of rose uh, blush uh, is is remain something that is still in use after all these yeah, years completely. That's so cool. Yay, thank you. What a fun little collection. Oh. I did not know that about meat plants and <laughs> makeup. We'll see yeah, if there's like an Oscar kind of Mayer makeup because, uh, coming out. Well, it's like, you know, oh, that would be kind of, that's how they made cream. Yeah. You know, cream bases at the time were made with lard and, and uh, other, you know, other animal fats uh, that, that made the base for, uh, you know, face creams, yeah. cold creams, you know, of that period. So, uh, so it was very common to use, uh, you know, use the uh, scraps from, from you know, the, the, the butchers that, that were that were closed. So, uh, so they were related in a way, even yeah. though it doesn't seem like it. Well, that is amazing. Very fun. Again, those are beautiful pieces of the collection. I love the puff lady as well. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. We so many great questions. And thank you for your feedback too. Uh, we'll let you know if we do like a business themed one, because we'd love to have people's questions for something like that. And we will be back next week. We'll be back next Thursday. You can also see our tutorials on Tuesday. And again, check out the Lucy collection to see it uh, up close in our pictures and all the stuff on our blog. We've got a lot of information there. And Gabrielle just put so much work and detail into it. You know, it's, it's definitely worth a glance. So I, uh, I definitely recommend that. So thank you so much. Thank you again, Gabriella wonderful tour again and i hope everyone has a lovely day we'll see you next week bye thank you bye bye guys bye <laughs> thank you